This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. Thanks, Mark. Our final speaker is the chairman and CEO of Afri Inc. Please welcome Mr. Vic Newfeld. Today almost didn't happen for two reasons. One, I'm really under the weather. And secondly, uh, our stock got halted this morning. But uh, that's because we did it. Uh, we have a press release that went out talking about uh, another financing raise, which I will speak to throughout the course of my presentation. Greenhouse, Essex County, Sun Parlor Belt, Leamington, Ontario. It's the only place to grow effectively, cost proficient, quality cannabis. Every other licensed producer that started this journey over three years ago thought that the only way was to use old culture guys with old culture type of growing techniques, indoor boxes. Their cost structures, as you'll see shortly, are just disaster. Typical disclaimers, I don't have to repeat what was already said. The co-founders, in the middle, and probably the, the biggest of the three of us, Koli Kachvalani. It started with his idea five years ago under the old uh, MMAR program. He is a greenhouse grower of over 35, closer to 40 years now, of potted plants, no pun intended. So in his greenhouse campus of about 37 acres, he grew seasonal flowers, um, poinsettias, geraniums, mums, etc. year round. He reached out to John Servini in early 2013 to help him continue some R&D in one of his old greenhouses called Cannabis, not knowing where it was going at the time. John Servini brought 20 plus years of greenhouse grow. He had just sold his half of a really large greenhouse produce operation, mini cukes for the most part in Leamington and the two joint forces. April 2014 was coming around the corner. Um, a few licensed producers had already indicated about going public, basically saying we're going to go big or we're going to go home. Coley and John both understood that this journey for it to take to the next level required more leadership, more skill and public markets. Around that time, um, I had been CEO and president of Jamison Vitamins for 21 years. Stars were aligned for, for Coley and John. Um, we made a strategic decision to divest Jamison and we sold in January of 2014. And after I gave notice uh, to find a new CEO, I joined Coley and John's team and together our journey started. As I said, comparing us to others, it's hard to bite my tongue. Um, but as you can see to the far left in the uh, unshaded half of the screen, starting with Q4 of 2016, ending up with Q3 of 2017, and Q3 2017 uh, ends February of 2017. Our year end is May 31. You can see our various cash and all-in cost structures. I'll start with Q2 of 2017 at $1.31 cash, and it grows to $1.85 all-in, the difference being all the various depreciation, amortization, componentry of, of the uh, shipping bottle cap label. It was industry-leading, still is. We had a little hiccup in Q3 of this year. Mother Nature finally did not cooperate year-round. So in the months of December, January, and February, uh, we had what's referred to as the poorest intensity of sunlight we've had in several, several years. Uh, lumens, to be ex specific, uh, that's really one of the intensity of the sun's rays that are needed for growing. So we experienced a little uh, less harvest, not potency, but harvest in that period of time. Um, I know my CFO has just arrived, he's sitting in the audience, I gotta stay um, on script, but I can tell you that Mother Nature has turned around in March and April have been um, as good as we are expecting in terms of lumens, therefore sunlight, therefore harvest. But even with that, if you look at our all-in costs of 223, 
And I think if we averaged it out for the year thus far, we are probably around, in that 12 month period, around $2 all in. Look at our three largest competitors uh, from their last quarterly statements and their MDNAs and trying to dissect what IFRS uh, does to statements uh, for companies that are growing more than they're selling. Uh, competitors one, two, and three. This is an important, very important point, and it's one of the unique selling propositions of the Afria story. As time marches on, and pharmacy enters medical, and the recreational world starts, there will be retail price compression. If anybody thinks that you're gonna be selling premium bud at a premium price forever, you're wrong. These costs are not sustainable to profitability. All three of these companies have been a year ahead of us in this journey. Why after three and a half years have they not been able to rein in their cost of production? Here's some of the advantages. Rather than trying to throw them under the bus, let me tell you what we do. Leamington, Ontario, Sun Parlor Belt. 2,500 acres of greenhouse is a concentration in this area. The largest concentration in North America, second largest in the world outside of the Netherlands. Why? Mother Nature powered by sun. We have infrastructure, we have fertilizers being made right in our backyard. We have the biological controls, the labs that are actually growing good bugs that eat bad bugs, which is how we do pest management. Our electrical savings is 12-fold, yes, 12-fold. What we spend in one year, on average, the listed public companies uh, of LPs spend in one month. Why? They have more lights, their intensity of lights are greater, and they have to air condition in the summer months. That is a huge cost, especially those 28 or 30 whatever licensed producers in Ontario where with global adjustment we're paying close to 20 cents a kilowatt hour. That is a huge, huge cost advantage to us, disadvantage to those that are growing indoor. I'm just going to very lightly, I'll let you kind of read as I'm talking here, but um, our license, which expires September of uh, 2017, that's our, uh, our cultivation called production and sales. Uh, we're capable now based on what we had uh, called part one, our original plus part one completion. We have completed part two expansion. It's adding another 57,000 feet. Uh, Health Canada has now completed their on-site field inspection. So now it's the waiting game with uh, the Toronto Office of Inspectorate and uh, followed by a delivery to Ottawa and then it gets lost in some black hole for a period of time. As we talk about the growth, and let me now off-road and address one question that was already asked. Whether it's the Parliamentary Budget Office or it's the Deloitte report, or it's other industry chatter. The medical community, the medical cannabis in Canada in four years time will reach $1.2 billion. Today it's about 200 million, 200 and change, okay? A lot of growth happening. That is without pharmacy. I'm one of the very few licensed producers, maybe it's my background, uh, Jameson Health and Wellness, my relationships with Shoppers, blah, blah, Rexall. I am very convinced that, that this journey called medical will include pharmacy. And I could maybe suggest to you that the Maritimes will be the first series of provincial colleges that will buck the trend given that Ontario, Alberta, BC, and the Canadian Pharmacy Associations have stonewalled this issue. When they come in, pharmacy, more and more doctors will now feel confident. I'm not saying more educated, more confident to write scripts for their patients, which have a hard time finding a compliant doctor, most of the times their own GPs, to write a script. They're very skeptical, etc. 
if they know that another highly reputable, with integrity, professional, called a pharmacist, is part of the communication and education and awareness program, they will be more than likely to start scripting. 1.2 million medical in four years will be 2.4 with the advent of pharmacy. Let me talk about recreational very quickly, so I'll get it a little deeper and then get back to this chart. July of 2018, um, very aggressive. There is a lot of this journey left ahead of both the federal, and when I say federal, there's probably five different departments. Uh, and don't ever forget that CRA is sneaking in the, uh, in the shadows somewhere with their excise tax. No media has ever talked about that. I think they're worried about Trump or something. Um, and then the provinces. And once the provinces lay down their legislative enactment as to who and where can sell, you then got to go to every municipality. Like the town of Leamington. Will they have an ordinance that will allow a legalized, highly regulated, license issued by the province retail outlet? I don't know. Don't know. How many will GTA have? Don't know. As you can see, there is a lot of other stuff that uh, has been talked about, but no clarity whatsoever. So July of 18, I know many of my colleagues and other licensed producers are waiting for that day. They really think that that is their, their gold mine. They got another thing coming. There's gonna be delays, and I'll get back now to price compression. When you add pharmacy into the medical channel, that's another mouth defeat. When you go retail, whether it's LCBO or freestanding in Ontario or the Liquor Control Board of New Brunswick, there's another mouth to feed. And I am just using my background, 30 to 35 point margin is what they're both going to be asking, thereabouts. And then under the recreational, you have the syntax that no one has talked about yet. Well, Colorado has had it, started way up here, it's dropped. But I think, Mark, is it still around 16, 17% state and city and county and all that? Right. Yeah. At the end of this, the a government's objective is to get rid of the underground grower, the illegal guys that fund organized crime. Get rid of them, Joe on the street can't sell. Joe sells for 10 bucks a gram today. If you reverse engineer that 10 bucks, under the recreational model. Get rid of the excise tax, reverse out HST, reverse out the margin at that new mouth to feed, and the distribution fees. You're coming up to a, a purchase price that a rec retail outlet is willing to pay. And I'm telling you, it's $5 a gram or less. When you do the reverse, I'll let you guys go home and do the math for yourself. I don't want to go back to that chart, but it's in your, in your handouts. Look at the cost all in to produce one gram of guys who have been in this journey for almost four years and haven't got it right yet. How are they going to win when recreational comes? And I haven't spoken to anything below the gross profit line in terms of advertising support, branding, listing fees, uh, key account managers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I am saying, if you go back, that our vision, our, our price today for the last 12 months, all in cost of about two bucks. I'll get to this very shortly, I apologize. I've off-roaded too much here. We are going to be all in at $1.50 or less. Our cash cost, when we finish part four, and I'll walk you through why, well, our cash cost will be about a dollar. So if I have to sell for four bucks, and it's a buck fifty all in cost under the retail model, would everybody just want to enjoy that 66% margin with very little cost below the line? Same thing medical, but I won't bother with going through the forensics on that one. Five bucks or less in a year and a half from now. So as you make your investment decisions and you start talking and, and reading, you have to understand what licensed producers have the right game plan, the playbook of growing it right with quality, with sustainability, without um, 
contaminants that are going to disrupt uh, a business model at a cost that you can actually make money on. <coughs> so here's where free is going. Far left, what we refer to as part two in the um, teal blue. We completed that in early January. Uh, we waited for three months for Health Canada, the Toronto inspectors to come, and uh, they did finally come. And now we're waiting for the, quote, the paperwork to flow through. And that will, in effect, allow us to grow another 57,000 feet. So we'll be just a little more than 100,000 feet of greenhouse grow, not infrastructure, so not processing and warehousing and oil extraction and et cetera, strictly greenhouse grow. We will be able to now produce 20, I think the number, another 5,500 uh, kilos of annualized uh, cannabis, again, all medical. One thing I forgot to stress, since late October, we have been selling what we've been growing so our income statement, if you look Q over Q, didn't move the needle much. Well, it's because we had no product. Everything we were growing, we were selling, waiting for part two. So part two, now it's the waiting game. And once we get formal approval from seed to ultimate harvest, it's about a four month journey for us to get uh, plants in that new production area, growing area into harvest. Part three, part three is the middle. It's in the green. It again is now doubling. You can see another 200,000 feet. So we're gonna go from 100,000 to 300,000 feet with the completion of part three. That now adds another 14,000 kilos of cannabis. And I'm gonna to suggest to you that that is all destined for medical again. The completion date is September, October of 2017. If Health Canada's historical timing is to be accounted for. It'll be a three month journey wait for the inspectors to come, another month and a half for the paperwork to get done, and then another four months to, for us to get seat to sale. So September, October is really gonna be something like June, July of 2018 before this harvest, these, this ex additional capacity will be able to be producing harvestable saleable product. And now we've also accelerated uh, the board two months ago has understood the timelines and has understood the delays, understood that you need contractors, competent Dutch greenhouse builders uh, to do what we need them to do. So a bit premature perhaps by some standards, but now we, I'm sitting, standing here and we're already too late. So part four is, is underway, dirt's being moved. That's the far right. That's now adding another 700,000 feet of greenhouse growth space, bringing to the vision that has been communicated for a while to the street, 1 million square feet of greenhouse grow, 350,000 feet of infrastructure capable of producing in excess of 75,000 kilos. I'm not here to give any forward guidance, but if you understood my five bucks a gram one day down the road, you can do your own math. Um, this will reflect approximately 13% uh, of the total marketplace in four years time as the PBO and Deloitte reports have commented on. I'm probably talking too much so I'm going to flip through quickly so there's Q&A. We've always had a retail, medical today, medical and rec tomorrow, and a wholesale. We don't sell wholesale anymore. What we're doing, we're growing, we're selling what we're growing, and we do believe it's gonna continue, but there may be a few months where we continue to assist what we call friendly licensed producers uh, in their plight and their needs. Um, again, there's a lot of issues of growing out there. Um, we've just, we got it right. And uh, so they reach out to us for assistance and it's good to help competition once in a while. Let me go back. Whoop. You know, Mark, I, did I pay you for all that accolades yet? Um, I'm gonna mention Canon Royalty, not because Mark mentioned me, but what he brings to the table 
I refer to it as a menu. He has done a lot of spade work, a lot of grunt work, a lot of trips travels. He's uncovered monsters and he's uncovered great guys in his quest to build up his portfolio to where it is today. Afria really prides herself on many things, um, but we've never lost sight of being core farmers. I should say I grew up on a peach farm in Leamington, Ontario many, many, many years ago, but aside from that, um, we value the dollar. So our first two, three years of this journey, we were really, not penny pinching, but really looked at um, resources and, and allocating them wisely. We did not have people, nor did I want to spend the money to do what Mark did. He had the uh, insight and the fortitude, and he went with his uh, plan. So what he brings to us between now and July of 2018 is a menu of opportunity. It's, it's invaluable when, when we make a determination we want pre-rolled cigarettes. Well, that's an easy thing to do. But if we want um, the high-end topical cream or lotion with this sort of formulation that's been clinically proven already in the US, sell me that IP or allow me that royalty arrangement that we can now bring that technology, process technology, and it may mean equipment technology onto the Afria campus in Leamington, Ontario. We will have our own innovation center. We will have our bakery and our kitchen. Tell me what the rules are first and we'll build accordingly. So we've got about 15 months for these rules to become a lot more clear. I can go on and on. Under science, um, Bodhi again is a uh, common investment we've uh, invested in. MedLab Australia is something very, very exciting to us uh, as we penetrate that market with uh, um, a certain uh, free oil strain. Um, I'll just move on. Our margins, um, again, uh, just slipped a bit, but I'm very, very confident that we'll be right back to where we've always performed now that Mother Nature, although today is not a good day for me to make that statement, uh, but I'm sure it's sunny in Leamington, uh, Ontario. Um, anyways, the, the number to focus in on more is the dollar thirty-one that's been re representative of uh, many, many quarters uh, going historical. I know you talked briefly on your uh, cap table, but that's a very quick snapshot of the uh, Fria table as we sit here today before today's, uh, today's raise, um, which by the way was, was significant. It was 75 plus shoe for about 86 million of equity, a bot deal, primarily five um, original Afria institutional investors uh, from Toronto continue to uh, show their support and commitment to us. Um, and we also had a uh, $25 million term debt for the uh, first time that we know of that significance from Windsor Family Credit Union. Um, and I believe that rate was at 3.95% 15 year AM. So very, very, very attractive and prudent business has it that you should have some debt on your books. So we did a combination of debt and equity. And I believe that's it. This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high-growth companies meet.